private parks in South Africa, um, I believe the number is 35% of rhinos are in private reserves. Hmm. Um, they have actually private farmers because they call uh, they call reserves and, and private reserves in South Africa, they call them um, farms, mm -hmm. so farmers. Um, but these private reserves have, have saved 90% of, of antelope species because of, of, um, of um, trading game and the sale and, and trade of game. Um, so they pay their park rangers, these private citizens. Mm -hmm. And when you start a park as a private citizen, especially in South Africa, you put a target on your back. You don't do it because it's some glorious job and you're making all this money. Uh, many of those people have other businesses that support those reserves. Mm. Um, they're doing it because they're passionate about it and that's their heritage and they want to save these species. But you put your life in danger the moment you put a rhino or an elephant or, or an endangered species on your property. Um, and how specifically? Well, I mean, there have, there have been farm attacks, is what they call them, and where poaching rings will raid somebody's home, the owner of the reserve's home, um, tie them up, take all their stuff and shoot them in the head when they leave something like that they'll open the safe like in those cases where where um most most rhino horn if if it's harvested the proper way which we discussed is yeah. not you know it's not good for the species in general but it is preventative um some people will keep it in a safe in their home mm. until they can get it to a bank to put it in a vaulted safe um and those are all registered by the government by the way um, so they'll, if they hear that there's a dehorning happen, they'll go and hit that house and, and, and raid it and take everything. Wow. Yeah. It's brutal. Um, what is the prevalence of the terrorists we were talking about earlier, but the, um, Boko Haram yeah. in, uh, I think it's Northern Africa. How widespread are they and how, what is their relationship to poaching? I know, you said, um, I know you said that poaching funds them. Yeah, so Boko Haram, especially Al Shabab. Well, I won't say especially because what they, is Al, is Al Shabab another terrorist? Group? Yeah, okay. they, they both have are ISIS affiliates. Okay, um, they were around before ISIS officially started, but they pledge allegiance to to ISIS. Right, right, right. They like teamed up with them. Yeah, exactly. They are huge bullies. They will go in and mow down villages overnight. You want to see, I mean, they rape, pillage, murder. I mean, light whole villages on fire just for the fuck of it. It is so screwed up. It is It is pure evil. Yes. And we were talking about yesterday. They'll, yeah. they'll kill anybody. It doesn't matter your religion. They will wreck your world. Um, Al-Shabaab, when I was in, uh, I had just come back from Kenya. I was in Tanzania when this happened. Um, they did um, the mall shooting in Nairobi where they... They terrorized them all um, until some badass British sass dude went in with his own kit and rifle and just started mowing them down. They were castrating men in the middle of the mall. You can see it on security footage. Castrating men, just terrorizing people. So look at that. These terrorists are poaching these incredible species, elephants, rhinos, the animals that we had on baby blankets growing up, poaching them to extinction so they can make money to then go and terrorize humans and push an extreme evil agenda. It's wild. Yeah, that is the worst kind of person. That's yeah. the worst kind of thing that could happen in any yeah. race or I culture. Have, I have personally tracked them for weeks these little Follow cells them. followed them or tried to catch them. You know, you're trying to, you're, you're putting the puzzle together. Yeah. We're getting evidence that they either went this way or this way to this city or that city. And you're trying to get their next move to cut them off. I've personally done that with some of my, my veterans. We have had, um, we have had targets on our head of, and been alerted to it by governments, bounties, because we were affecting their bottom line. If you affect a criminal's bottom line, I mean, they, they got nothing to lose except money. And that's that's all that matters to them, mm -hmm. whatever agenda they have. So do you guys plan, that, like, are you guys literally, like, back at headquarters, like, 
tracking these people and tracking each cell and trying to like figure out the next move? Are you, I mean, are you like strategizing this like a war against these guys and, and trying to stay one step ahead of where they are? Do you guys have people on the inside work that are that are close to them that are reporting back to you? We How, do have informants. Yes, you do. We do. Uh, when we do these operations, um, whether or not we have one going on right now, I can't tell you. But uh, obviously, but I have to kill you. <laughs> um, Which you could eat very easily do. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but uh, no, we 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 don't do that necessarily at our headquarters facility. We do that on the fly. I mean, we're a very small team. We, as a nonprofit, in my opinion, do the most with the least, just like the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Um, we we don't have all this fancy technology. Well, we'd love to have it, yeah. But mm-hmm. um, no, we do a lot on a on a bootstrap budget. And, um, and I think that's a testament to, to our character as an organization, but no, we, we, uh, we put these investigations together on the fly while we're moving and going after these guys. I mean, we're on the road nonstop. You don't sleep. Um, you, uh, we do have informants that, and they're locals and they work tirelessly. These are Africans that, that give a damn, but, um, I'll say this though, our biggest success in counter poaching though is not the the flashy stuff i mean we've had people label us as mercenaries that's not what we are at all my god like that's that's it's not how you fix this what we do that has the most effect is by taking subject matter experts from around the world different trades whether it's crocheting a blanket to making stuffed animals to um you know cups and and you know household goods and items and we bring them in it's a hand up approach not a handout and we teach the locals gardening, for instance. They're gardening so much now that they can sell their produce to other locals instead of spending all their money to take a taxi two hours to the grocery store and wasting it all there. They're growing their own food, feeding their own family, and selling their goods locally and making money. It's a one health approach. Mm. So it's like, and, and it takes time, you know, but now these people, they could care less about poaching because they know that. Hey, number one, there's some badass rangers on that reserve that were trained by U.S. war veterans or international war veterans because we do have international. We've got an Italian guy over there now. He's awesome. Um, but anyways, they they know like, hey, it's not worth going in there. Well, I'm going to work with these guys. This is cool. Like we've got a relationship. They're helping us. Like you're watching people from two opposite ends of the planet, way different backgrounds come together for one common purpose. Mm. And that's to save the ecosystem that we consider ourselves a part of. Mm -hmm.